Good morning. Good morning. Okay, let's just do a little bit better than that, please. Good morning. Good morning. All right, thank you. That's much better. We welcome you this morning to our time of worship, Lake Havasu Church of the Nazarene, whether you're joining us here in person, and there are plenty of socially distanced seats available if you wish to, uh, to join us any Sunday where you're welcome to come, or if you're joining us online this morning. We welcome you. We look forward to this day. We've been looking forward to it for some time. Uh, a little bit later in the service this morning, I'll be introducing to you Reverend Rich Stoffen, uh, who is the executive director of Camp uh, Pine Rock up in uh, Prescott, our church's campground. Uh, he'll give you, uh, I don't know if he'll give you any information about the camp or not, but I will tell you that because of the pandemic, it's been a uh, different year. Uh, camps have not uh, happened. And Rich and, Stri uh, Rich and Trish have uh, uh, continued to lead uh, through this difficult time. We have been announcing uh, that we are receiving a love offering for them. And uh, later in the service this morning, when our uh, offering time is, if you would like, you can contribute uh, back at the back on the little white box. You can contribute online. You can contribute by dropping your checks by or sending them in. But if you would like to bless Camp Pine Rock, with a little extra during this time, just be sure and designate on the check Count Pine Rock. A couple of other announcements. There are not many, but there's a couple of stars left on our trees, and we are blessing some of the uh, youth of our church with Christmas uh, gifts this year, and uh, we need those back into the church by next Sunday. So there are a few stars left. If you would uh, be willing to contribute or to participate, Please take one of those this morning and then record it back at the connection table at the back uh, by listing that you have taken that, that star. One other announcement, we will be celebrating Christmas Eve. Uh, that is usually a, a pretty large service for us, so we have chosen to go with two time frames, one at 5 o'clock, one at 6.30. It will be a candlelight service. There will be some Christmas caroling. There will be a few other things. Uh, and pastor will deliver the Christmas message, but we want you to feel free to attend either at 5 or at 6.30 on Christmas Eve as we look very much forward to being together at that, that time. Uh, at this time, I would draw your attention to the screen. We have a video this morning. The Mann family will share our Advent reading with us this morning. Good morning. My name is Diana, and this is my daughter Kayla, my son Lucas, and my mother Donna. Today, on our third day, third Sunday of Advent, we light the pink candles representing joy. Psalm 28, 7. The Lord is my strength and shield. I trust him with all my heart. He helps me, and my heart is filled with joy. Amen. Thank you, ma'am family. And we are going to celebrate with joy this morning. Would you stand with us and join us in singing Joy to the World, Unspeakable Joy. See 
Do you have a joy that's unspeakable but just shows to everyone around you? Uh, we're told that as followers of Christ, we should be filled with joy. We continue with Midnight Clear. seated. Um, just before the offering time, I just want to comment on um, one of those. You notice we've combined a traditional Christmas song with, uh, with contemporary words in places. 
He said, and man at war with man hears not the love song which they bring. He said, hush the noise and cease the strife and hear the angels sing. <clears throat> Let's hear the angels sing today. At this time, we'll prepare for the offer. Join me, if you would, please, in prayer. Almighty God, we praise you this morning. We worship you now through our tithes and offerings and gifts. Lord, you were the greatest gift of all time. And we respond by giving back just a portion of what you have blessed us with. In gratitude, in joy. For your word says you love a joyful giver. I've heard it could be translated hysterically joyful. So Lord, today we are hysterically joyful to give back and worship you through these gifts. In Jesus' name we ask. In pray. Jesus name. Amen. It's not the music in the air it's not the beauty of the light, the true beauty of Christmas gets lost behind the merchandise. This is what I know of Christmas, is that it led to Calvary. Bled and died to set me free The true beauty of Christmas Is far greater than a song It's more than Christmas movie Wreaths of holly and pine cones the true beauty of Christmas Hung up on a rugged tree The true beauty of Christmas Gave his life for you and me So enjoy your Christmas music Enjoy the pretty lights Watch a Christmas movie But before you go to bed tonight Say a prayer to God above Thank Him for the gift of life The true beauty of Christmas is far greater than a song. It's more than Christmas movies, the wreaths of holly and pine cones. The true beauty of Christmas. The true beauty of Christmas He gave his life for you and me The true beauty of Christmas he gave his life for you and me more to Christmas than what goes on around us. If it weren't for Christmas, though, there would have been no Calvary. 
There have been no resurrection. There have been no grace that sets me free. Stand with us again as we prepare for our prayer time this morning. I ask you to sing a door with us. The pastor will come then and uh, bring the pastoral prayer. step down from heaven Pastor prays for us this morning.
morning. I'm Pastor Katie, and just so blessed to be able to worship with you today, and it's good to see you. Thank you for coming to church. Thank you for joining us online today or throughout the week at our um, Facebook website, and our. Um, if you'd like to catch it on YouTube or let your friends know, we'll be on YouTube by tomorrow. Uh, and it's a great week, isn't it? Who doesn't get excited about the third week of Advent? Not only do we celebrate joy, but we get to light the pink candle. It's special. It should make you smile. I saw someone, uh, oh, it was Sean. Um, she's wearing dots. You know, dots are happy, stripes are serious. So let's wear dots all week long. We'll be like the Dr. Seuss uh, church. Uh, it's a happy week. And I know there are burdens that we, we carry. I know that there is darkness around us, but we are the light. We are the light of the world as Christ comes with us into every single conversation. And I hope you are proclaiming Jesus wherever you go because people need the Lord and we have a voice and now they need to hear it. Let's pray. Lord, we praise you that you gave us a voice. We praise you that you gave us a purpose and that we get to celebrate the joy that you brought to the world. Lord, I praise you that you would use us, your humble servants, to glorify your name, to point people in the direction of you. Lord, we just lift up our voices this week. I pray that we can go tell it from the mountain. We can tell it in the grocery store. We can tell it in our homes. We can tell it online. We can like every service online. You can go to every church in town, I don't care, and like their service. Lord, we want to get the word out that life is different with Emmanuel, God with us. Life is better and life is eternal in heaven. Though you didn't even have a room, you have gone to prepare a mansion for us with many, many rooms. Lord, even though you allowed your body to be broken for us, you are the great healer and the great physician. Lord, we recognize that you can heal us completely. We think of those who are hurting on this side of heaven. We think especially of the victims of COVID and their families. Lord, heal them. Heal their bodies. Protect them. Protect us. Lord, we think of so many who are grieving. We know that you brought us joy. And so we hang on to that, knowing that we can still experience your joy in the midst of our suffering. Help us to see the blessings of the future, the hope of the future. Remind us that you bring whole and complete peace on earth. Lord, you are the Prince of Peace and we love you. Thank you for all that you do for us. Bless the rest of our service. Bless uh, Rich Stoffen as he brings us the word. Help us to hear the message today with freshness. Be with us this week. We love you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. It's, it's a privilege for me this morning to introduce to you Reverend Rich Stoffen. Um, I got to know Rich serving on our district advisory board with him for a number of years until he became disqualified. Uh, <laughs> That, I'll, I'll explain that in just a moment. <laughs> uh, Rich has, was pastor at our, our um, Phoenix First Church for over 18 years. Saw them through a major building program and then call, God called him and his wife Trish to a new ministry, which took him off the DAB because he now works for us. <laughs> and uh, he is the executive director of Camp Pine Rock in Prescott, Arizona, as I've mentioned to you. Many of you have very special and fond memories of Camp Pine Rock. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, it has been a difficult year. And uh, Rich and Trish and their staff, uh, uh, their staff is what is left as their department heads. The, the, uh, and they, they do it all. They still, by the way, if you want to have a family reunion or a uh, teen retreat, or uh, they're open yeah. 
and you can go and do that. I did ask, uh, just a couple more things about Rich. I did ask him how he became a Boston Red Sox fan <laughs> because I haven't figured that out yet, but now he explained to me. He grew up in Pennsylvania, and that's who he got to listen to on the radio, probably, and watch on television. Uh, they traveled around a lot. He did pastor in Oregon before pastoring on our district, but he's still a Boston Red Sox fan. <laughs> One other quick thing. I admire and respect him for the reason that he's wearing a coat and tie this morning. And he had a, a mentor he looked to, a pastor, who always wore a coat and tie. And Rich said, I will never preach the word without wearing a coat and tie. So respect that, would you? Even if you're not wearing one today? Listen, I welcome this morning Reverend Rich Stoff. And Rich, come and share with us what God has on your heart. She was in the, the program towards ordination, and so it's been a few years for us as well. It's a privilege for me to be, be here. I bring greetings to you from Camp Pine Rock, and it's, it's Pine Rock Camp and Retreat Center, but it's, yes, Larry. Sorry, Rich, your mic's on. Well, actually, it says on. Good, yes. How about the rest of you? You want to speak louder? I can speak louder. <laughs> Thanks, Larry. I appreciate you. you. No, that's okay. I appreciate your concern for that. Uh, I bring you greetings from, from Pine Rock. It is, uh, it's cold there now. When I left this morning, it was 14 degrees. While I was driving through town, I got down to 11 degrees. And I'm very grateful that my car has heated seats. And, uh, and so I, I enjoyed the trip out here. And it really is a privilege for... For, uh, for me to be here. And I, I guess I just want to say, too, Merry Christmas. What a, what a, great, what a great season to, uh, to be a believer and to know the Lord. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about Camp Pine Rock. Uh, what Lloyd just said is really true. We are open, and we would love to have you there. If you'd like to come and rent one of our, our cabins, you can do that. If you want to bring a, a group, you can do that. It doesn't matter. Uh, I think it doesn't matter what, which size that you bring. Uh, this last week, starting last Sunday through yesterday lunch, uh, seven days, we had a group from Arizona State uh, with us up at the Camp Pine, uh, up at Camp Pine Rock, and they were a Shakespearean group, and so they would literally read Shakespeare all day. If they'd have done it in the dining hall, I think we all would have been sleeping, but they love Shakespeare, and so that's what they did. And um, that was a group of, like I said, 20 people uh, the largest group that we've had since we shut down has been about 80, I want to say 88. That was a men's group. Now, in the summertime, we typically have uh, anywhere from 250 to 300 feet people on, 350 people on the campground. And uh, we have taken a major, major hit. So uh, before I go any further, I just want to say to all of you who have participated in today's offering, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You can look and you, you can say, well, the campground's losing thousands of dollars. It won't even make an impact. Yes, it will. I spoke to my mother yesterday, and she had sent the camp a check, and I thanked her for that. And uh, she said, well, I wish it could be more. And regardless, God takes what is given, and he expands it. I'm amazed Lloyd and, and Pastor Katie would uh, tell you the same thing, uh, that it's amazing that we are, you realize in two days, it'll be nine months since the camp um, we didn't shut down, but since our business was uh, cur curtailed, nine months, and, and yet we are able to continue on even though we are losing uh, thousands of dollars each month. And so I don't know how God does that, but I'm just grateful that he does. Because I, I, how many of you have been to Camp Pine Rock? How many of you have been blessed by Camp Pine Rock? Well, our prayer is that that continues, that uh, we will continue to be a blessing because we believe uh, my wife and I believe, and part of the reason why we went there, a couple reasons. One, my wife has been going to Camp Pine Rock since she was in diapers. And I won't tell you how old she is, but I will say this, that her birthday last month, that it was um, the speed limit when you're um, on one, one of the roads. Now, you can determine whether that's... <laughs> I'm not going to tell you. But anyway, she's been, she's been coming to Camp Pine Rock for quite some time. But I would also tell you 
that we believe in the ministry of Camp Pine Rock. We believe that, that it is probably the strongest arm of evangelism in the Arizona District Church of the Nazarene. And what I mean by that is I believe that at camps, whether it's children or youth or men's or women's or camp meeting, that people get saved there. We believe that, that people uh, throughout life, that they, uh, they lose some of that passion for God and then they go to camp or camp meeting and they get challenged and they recommit their life to Christ. We believe that people are sanctified at Camp Pine Rock. We believe that, that people uh, uh, get called into ministry, whether it's the mission field or youth ministry or children's ministry or uh, worship ministry uh, or pastoral ministry. We believe that God calls people at Camp Pine Rock. And we believe also that even sometimes that there are lifetime mates that are found at, at Camp Pine Rock. And so it's a very, very special place. And so um, while I say thank you for your, uh, your offerings, uh, there are times that, that people just can't do that. But one thing that we all can do is we can all pray for Pine Rock. And I would request that of all of you. We desperately need your prayers. Uh, what, what Lloyd said is true. Uh, when, when everything hit in March, we hung on to our staff for another, I want to say a month and a half. So the beginning of June, we furloughed all of our hourly staff except for one who is my wife's assistant's assistant in guest relations. And the only staff that we have then are our managers. And so we have, uh, we have eight of us. Uh, th there's the one who's an assistant manager to the dining hall, the, the chef, one is my wife's assistant, and then we actually added a ninth who is, uh, helps us do housekeeping because while I say we've closed, we haven't. All of our cabins, private cabins, have been open, and uh, since July we've been taking groups, so it's not dire. I, I don't want to give you the wrong impression, uh, but we need bigger groups, we need larger groups, we need the vaccine to work, we need things to open up. Amen. Aren't you tired of wearing these masks? Or is it just me? It must just be me. <laughs> and so, uh, please, 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 I, I, I seek your prayer. I, re I really wish that, that you would pray for us because uh, we desperately need it. We, uh, we get tired sometimes. Uh, during, during the times when we're dealing with staff, uh, our housekeeping manager and her assistant, or the w w person that's working with her, and our uh, maintenance manager, they don't help us serve the, the groups. So all the, all the cooking, all the serving, all the dishwashing, all that kind of stuff, all of us managers are doing that. None of us are doing what is our job description. We are doing whatever it takes to go forward. So while I am the uh, ED, which stands for executive director, what I am right now is the executive dishwasher because I'm in the dish room most of the time when we have guests and it's a, uh, it's a blessing to serve the Lord that way. And so keep praying for us. Before I get started, I do wanna take a moment and I wanna pray for your church and I wanna pray for Pine Rock. Are you okay with that? Sure. Amen. All right, bow your heads please. Father, what a joy it is to be here today. I am so blessed to have the opportunity to be with your church at Lake Havasu City. And uh, one of the things that I never had the opportunity to do when I was a pastor was to go out and be in other churches. But today, I have the privilege of being with this group of people. Lord, I wanna thank you for the warmth that they display. I wanna thank you for the passion that they have for worship. And now, Lord, I would ask that uh, that you take these words that I'm about to preach and that you would use them. I have a friend who often says when he preaches that, that nobody in the church needs to hear his words. And I would say nobody here today needs to hear the words of Rich Stoffen. But every one of us need to hear a word from you. Amen. And so I pray that you would take these words and that you would use them and you would further our walk with you. And that we would walk out of here with greater joy because of, of who you are and what you've done in our lives. And then, Lord, I do want to take a moment, and I also want to pray for Pine Rock. I thank you for the opportunity that you have given us to serve there. And while it hasn't been constant joy there, it, it has been uh, good to be able to serve you. And I pray that you would begin to, to lift the fog that is over the camp and that there would be more people, more groups that would be able to come and that we'd be able to minister to them. And that the, the great legacy of Camp Pine Rock would continue. Bless us in the time that we have left, Lord, and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I've titled today's sermon, 
Christmas in a word. And we're going to be looking at one word that helps define what Christmas ultimately means for the people of God. One word that describes the life that Jesus came to bring for his followers. And our scripture passage for today is Isaiah chapter 9. We're going to read verses 1 through 7. I, I, I think it's going to be up on this, the screen, and I'll read it. And in this passage, this is the, the prophet Isaiah who is writing, and he predicts the coming of the Messiah. And what he does is he talks about the kingdom, and this, this chosen one, the Messiah, will establish for God's people. Now, typically when I preach, a lot of times I, I read through the NIV. So the reason it's up on the screen is today I'm going to read in the ESV. So let's look at Isaiah chapter 9, verses 1 through 7. It says, But there will be no gloom for her who is in anguish. In the former time, he brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the latter time, he has made glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. Are you still with me? All right, just checking. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwell in a land of darkness, on them has light shone. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as they are glad when they divide the spoil. For the yoke of his burden and the staff for his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For every boot of the tramping warrior in battle tumult, and every garment rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for the fire. You're thinking, what does this have to do with Christmas? You're still with me, right? Verse 6. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And everybody said? Amen. 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 Of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. <clears throat> on the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Amen. Folks, today, our Christmas in a word is increase. Okay? We live in a world that is defined by diminishing returns. For some, it feels like everything is just shrinking. We don't seem to have as much time. We don't seem to have as much money. We don't seem to have as much freedom. We don't seem to have as much happiness. We don't seem to have as much potential or chances in life that we may once have had. I believe today, today especially, this year, the year 2020, with all that is going on, with all that's happening with the coronavirus, with all this, aren't you glad the elections are over? Almost over? <laughs> but I believe that many people today feel like their world is getting smaller and that time is running out. And that all of their problems are crowding in and that things will never be like they were. And this is going to sound funny to you, but it wasn't that long ago that I heard a teenager, okay, a student, a teenager say, you know, I miss the good old days. <laughs> can you imagine that? Can you, can you imagine that? And, and often I hear the idea expressed that that our nation's best days are behind us. I hear often that opportunities don't exist like they once did, that people don't care about church, that people don't care about God, that people don't care about spiritual things like they once did, and that things will never again be as good as they once were. I, I hear that often. I still hear it often. But I want you to know that I believe that these statements are entirely, are not entirely true. The real problem that I've discovered, and I've heard this all my life, is the idea that our quality of life is determined, determined by the availability of and our access to 
certain resources. You know what I'm talking about. I'll say it this way. If you don't have plenty of this or you don't have plenty of that, your life will be less than it could be. This or that usually amounts to money and material possessions. And I'm here this morning to tell you that there's more to life than this or that. Amen. And I would say that most of us that are here today already know that. And praise the Lord for that. I'm here to say that one of the gifts of Christmas is that Jesus... See, I love, by the way, I love Pastor Katie's prayer. I love her lead up to the prayer. Because one of the gifts of Christmas is that Jesus came into the world with a promise, a promise to give us an abundance of everything that really matters. Everything that really matters. Believers do not live in a world of shrinking resources, at least not the resources that matter. Amen? Amen. Listen, folks. We live in a world of expanding resources. And the reason why we live in a world of expanding resources is because over 2,000 years ago, Jesus came into this world he came into this world for a purpose, to create a kingdom of increase for all who choose to follow him. Do you believe that? Yeah. Now, I'm not a prosperity preacher. I'm not saying that. As we look at Isaiah 9 today, I want us to consider three areas, though, of increase that we can count on if we are a follower of Jesus Christ. So first of all, we can count on ever increasing opportunity. You know why that is? This is because we are citizens of an ever-increasing kingdom. How do I know that? I am so glad you asked. The reason why I know that is it says right in the scripture. Look at verse 3. Look what it says in, in, in the very beginning. You have multiplied the nation. You have multiplied the nation. Now he is speaking in this context of the nation of Israel, who their, their leaders, through their disobedience, had plunged them into darkness and had made them targets for all of their surrounding enemies. Now, it would not always be this way because God would multiply this nation and again, they would walk in the blessings of light and they would advance. Now, these words apply not only to Judah and the northern kingdom in 700 BC, but they also applied to God's people, all God's people. And I would say they also apply to this church, this church and all churches today. Listen, there's some things we need to really understand. We are not members of a dying brigade that is fighting for its last breath. Amen. We are not. We are members of an ever-increasing kingdom right. with ever-increasing opportunities out on the horizon. Amen. Now, you know this. Some equate living the Christian life as the spiritual equivalent of Custer's last stand or the, the days of the Alamo. The world is winning. Oh, the world is winning, and, and sin is winning, and oh my goodness, darkness is winning, and we are just trying to hang on. I got to tell you, folks, that's not the case. That is not the case. I'm sorry, but it's not. Now listen, I'm not a knucklehead. <laughs> now, you're not supposed to laugh at that. You're supposed to say amen. amen. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Just stick with me here. We may... As people, we may, as Christians, in fact, we will experience setbacks from time to time. We may suffer a defeat here and there. But folks, listen, that's not how our story ends. It's not how our story ends. It doesn't end that way. Victory is around the corner, and God's increase is on its way. Right. Now, uh, you remember a few years ago the book uh, Prayer of Jabez? You remember that book, right? You remember the prayer. It, it was amazing how that book uh, turned us on to the prayer of Jabez. And um, it was found in 1 Chronicles. 
And that, that little uh, book, that little scripture, that little prayer has empowered so many people who have been faithful to pray. Do, do you remember the second section of the prayer? Probably not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read it. First Chronicles chapter 4, verse 10 says, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my border. Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my border. Lord, would you enlarge my territory? It's about expanding your outreach, and it's about tapping into new possibilities. Now, something that I have learned in following Jesus in the 45 years <laughs> that I have been doing it, it's been a long time, is that even though there may be times in my life when money is tight, and, and even though there's times where we might be squeezed, kind of like I feel like what's happening now in our society, uh, where we're squeezed for our money, we're squeezed for our time, you, you as a believer will never ever lack the opportunity to do good in God's kingdom. It won't happen. You know, there's always opportunity. You will never lack the opportunity to be a blessing to others. You know what made me smile this morning? Was to, to hear about the stars on your tree, trees. What, what a great opportunity that is for you. You can say, well, I don't have much. Probably not gonna take much. I think you should think about that. You will never lack the opportunity to minister to those who are in need. And you know why? That's because our kingdom, which is God's kingdom, is multiplying throughout the world and opportunity is all around us. Amen. It's all around us. Whether you're in Prescott or you're in Phoenix or you're in Lake Havasu, it is all around us. That is why Jesus said in Matthew 9 that the harvest, remember this, that the harvest is what? It's plentiful. It's plentiful. We never lack for opportunities to do good in God's kingdom. And so that brings me to ask the question, well, if that's the case, what is the problem then? Jesus said in Matthew 9, 37, the workers are few. We don't lack for opportunity. Most of the time we lack for vision or we lack for dedication. And can I just tell you, it is not just the pastor's job to give you a vision, okay? You're not following her vision. God can give you a vision too, amen? amen. That, that's a lot of pressure on your pastor. Just saying. It's so great when I get to come to churches and I can say what I really think because I don't have to stay. <laughs> Here's what I'm saying today. Regardless of what may appear to be going on in your own life, even if like the leaders of Israel, you have created problems for yourself through stubborn disobedience, I want you to know now, if that's the case, even if that is the case, God is willing, in fact, he's eager to multiply your territory and expand your borders and fill your life with opportunities wherever he has placed you to make a difference in his kingdom. He's willing to do that. He'll take you right where you are and he will expand your kingdom. I mean, your life, your opportunities, not your kingdom. Regardless of whatever resources you may look at and you'd say, well, I don't have this, I don't have that, I don't have this, I don't have that. Whatever you think you lack, you will never lack the opportunity to do, to do good for God's kingdom. Amen? Amen? Listen, understand this. Understand this, know this. Jesus came to fill your life. He came to fill your life with purpose. He came to fill your life with direction. He came to fill your life with meaning. And because of Jesus, you, me, everyone who is here today can enjoy ever-increasing opportunity to do good in the world that we live in where God has placed us. Ever-increasing opportunity leads to the next area of increase that I want you to see. Jesus came that we might experience ever-increasing pink candle joy. <laughs> Polka dot joy, not stripes. Sorry, you don't have to be serious. Polka dot joy, ever increasing joy. Isaiah said in verse 3, again, you have multiplied the nation 
and increased its joy, they rejoiced before you as with joy at the harvest. Hmm. Isn't this great? Isn't this great? Jesus came to give us an abundance of what really matters. And there is nothing like an abundance of joy. There is nothing like it. Listen, right now, our circumstances at Pine Rock, if you, they kind of stink. I've not lost my joy. I've not lost my confidence that God is in control. Have, have you ever noticed, though, that no one ever says, you know, I just wish I wasn't so <laughs> joyful all the time. I wish I weren't so happy all the time. Nobody ever, ever says that. People have said, you know this, it sounds, it sounds counter, but people have said, you know, this money has become a burden. This dream job that I thought was going to be fantastic really has become a nightmare. A nightmare. This relationship that I thought was going to be fantastic has really become an albatross in my life. But you will never, ever hear people say, this joy is totally getting me down. This happiness that I have in my heart is, is holding me back. Anybody ever hear that? And you won't. Not only does God want to give you the opportunity to do ever-increasing good in His kingdom, but He wants to fill your heart with joy in the process of doing that. Over the years, I have known more people than I can count. And, and if I had to be honest, there have been times in my life that I have been this guy a time or two whose lives become all about the pursuit of the prize. Their lives become all about the pursuit of ambition. Their lives become all about finding success. And ultimately what happens is that instead of those things making them happy, what happens is they find themselves more and more miserable the more time goes by. Do you, have you known anybody like that? Amen. It's not just me, right? It, it seems to me that it, it happens quite often. That is why Jesus said in Mark chapter 8, verse 36, For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? See, God has said from the very beginning, in effect, if, if, you, if you will find your life in me, I will give you something that no one else or nothing else in all the world can give you. Abiding joy. Ever increasing joy. It's what the Apostle Peter called joy that is inexpressible and full of glory. You know, I, I, I usually I memorize that joy unspeakable and full of glory because it's, it's the song. But I like joy inexpressible. We can't even express it and full of God's glory. And, and you know how it is. Sometimes we, we very foolishly demand that God give us this <laughs> Or God, give us that. Or we pray, God, you need to meet this deed and you need to do it right now. We, Lord, we, we need this, uh, this problem to be solved. Or not just, Lord, don't just solve it. We you just make it disappear. Or, or a situation changed that would be changed in, in our favor. And, and basically, sometimes we foolishly demand a turbulence-free life. And no such offer has ever been on the table. You know that, right? Mm -hmm. I know that's a hard one to say amen to. <laughs> but I did hear Lloyd kind of mumble. <laughs> God has never promised us an easy life. He hasn't. Jesus said in John 16, verse 33, In this world you will have trouble. In this world, you, I'll point at every one of you. Watch. Every one of you. You will have trouble. It's just what Jesus says. He says in John 15, 11, These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. Huh, see the connection there? Listen, we can't snap our fingers and just expect all of our problems to go away. But there is one promise from the Lord Jesus that you can claim for your own right here and right now. 
And that promise is that your joy will be full. Full. Now, I know, I know that there will be times in your life when other areas of your life are not full. Things like you open up your pocketbook or you open up your wallet and it's not full. Or maybe your dance card is not full. Or maybe your job prospects are not full. And yet you can say, Lord, Lord, even during this season of waiting, Lord, even during this season of in between, I look to you to be my joy. Now I want to take a moment that, and I, I want to talk about my son for just a second. I have one son. My wife and I have one son. His name's Brett and his wife, Samantha. They have been trying to have a baby for quite a few years. They've gone through in vitro fertilization three times with zero success and it's cost them a lot of money. Uh, Thanksgiving, we drove to Sacramento in the heart, the belly of the beast, California. <laughs> and uh, we spent nine days with them. I cannot. <clears throat> Sorry. I cannot begin to tell you the joy that it brought to my wife and I to spend time with our kids. And of course, that, that you'd say that's probably true of getting to spend time with your family too, but it was more than that. Because they'd had this, uh, I, guess you, I guess you'd probably call it a, a failure, these in vitro fertilizations, and the last one was a few months ago. And we'd not spent time with them in that time, but I can tell you, even though that's the case, they've grown closer to each other, they've grow, grown closer to God, and He has walked with them every step of the way. Right. And I could hear them saying something like this, Lord, even during this season of waiting, this season of in-between, I look to you to be my joy. And that brings me and my heart great joy. One of the fruits of being filled with the Holy Spirit is that he gives us joy. And it is ours for the asking and it is ours for the receiving. Even when the circumstances of life are not what we might wish them to be, we can experience the joy that comes from walking with Jesus Christ as our Savior and our Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. There is a third ever-increasing area that we can count on. We can count on ever-increasing impact. Isaiah prophesied in verse 6. For, up to, for to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. Sounds a little more Christmassy, doesn't it? For to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Verse 7, of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. Amen. Jesus came into the world to preach, not about politics, despite, uh, and again, I'm so glad the election's over, and I, I have my thoughts on politics, but that's not why Jesus came. Jesus also did not come to talk about, to preach about, to think about military strategy. That's not what he did. He came to preach about the reality of his kingdom, the kingdom of God. He said in John 18, 36, my kingdom is not an earthly kingdom. It is not of this world, but it's here right now. <clears throat> Here's the best part, three words. It's within you. Amen. It's within you. This is Jesus saying this. And again, I have to say this one more time. Jesus did not come to establish any government in any nation on this earth. Here's the real truth. He came to reign in the hearts of those who call on his name. He came to reign in the hearts of those people who choose to accept them into their lives and to follow him. Are you a follower or are you a fan? Be a follower. This is his kingdom. And I will tell you that his kingdom knows no boundaries geographically because his kingdom does not just in, exist in Lake Havasu City, in Arizona, in the United States. It exists all over the world. His kingdom is a worldwide movement of those committed to him, 
seeking to good to do good wherever they are able to do that good. Listen, again, what, what a great church you have, Pastor Katie, to look at and to see so many of you here today through this, this very difficult time. I, I have a word for you. You are not just one small church. No offense. I'm not trying to say you're small. Any, any believer is a, is a force. I've already told you that. You are not one small church in one small town in one small southwestern state. We are, we are a global community. We are a family made up of men and women from every tribe, from every nation, from every generation, and we are making a difference in every location around the world. Amen. Every single one. Amen. Now, I will tell you that some of the growth is phenomenal throughout Africa, throughout Asia, throughout South America. Lives are being changed. They're being changed. Marriages are being restored. Broken families are being reunited. Hope is taking root in communi communities where once there was absolutely no hope. Do you know why that is? It's important to understand why that is. That is because God's people are at work in God's kingdom. And because of that, good things are happening all over. And the reason why is verse 7. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. Amen. Have you ever just taken time? You should do this, maybe. Take some time and think about what the world might be like without God's people. Think about what the world would be like without God's people actively engaged in doing good wherever God has placed them. Now, you know this as well as I do. <laughs> the church, sadly, the church has plenty of critics. And we often get blamed for this problem or for that problem. And usually it's why we're building schools <laughs> or communities or hospitals or orphanages that we are accused of being narrow-minded and intolerant. And it seems today more than ever that uh, media and social media, social media are entirely against us. And yet God's church continues and it thrives. Amen. Praise his name. Amen. Because think about this. It, 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 I would say that wherever and whenever there is a disaster on a global scale, more often than not, it's the Christian ministries who are first on the scene and they are the last to leave. Helping people put their lives back together. Amen. This sounds silly, but it just popped in my head. Brad Paisley, the country singer, has a song called Those Crazy Christians. You should look it up and, and listen to the words. This actually talks about that. I know that there are things in the church that need to change, right? <laughs> that goes without saying. But again, can you just imagine what the world might look like without God's people doing his good work? This is the kingdom that the Messiah came to establish. His kingdom does not exist in a castle. His kingdom does not exist in a palace. It exists in the hearts of his people. Amen. And of the increase of his kingdom, of his government, and of peace, there will be no end. Amen. Praise God. Because as long as we are here, we will never stop doing the work that God has called us to do. Amen? Amen? So again, Christmas in a word is that Jesus came to give us a great abundance. That's kind of, it kind of means the same thing. A great abundance. Jesus came to give us an ever-increasing supply of everything that we need and everything that really matters. Because of Jesus, your life can have significance like it never has before. Because you can count on an ever-increasing opportunity to do good. And let me just tell you, nothing feels better than being used by God for the good of his kingdom and for the good of others. And that's why, number two, we can also count on ever-increasing joy. 
Because we know that every day God is moving in us and he is directing us and he is creating a new harvest of believers who follow him. And that is why, third, we can count on having an ever-increasing impact in his ever-increasing kingdom. Amen. Again, I want to remind you, and this is just such great news, we are part of a global movement making peace happen and joy happen and love happen and giving hope wherever it is that we go. Now, if, if you have ever felt like your resources are limited, and if you've ever felt like the world is getting smaller by the minute, I want you to know that Jesus came to give you more than enough, more than enough of everything that matters. I encourage you this Christmas season one more time to let him fill your life with purpose and direction Amen. and joy. Amen. Will you bow your heads with me? Father, it's truly been a joy to be in church this morning for me. Because as you know, Lord, not every weekend do I get to be in church. And so I have the opportunity to be with these great folks here at Lake Havasu City. And Father, I am so grateful for the, the truth of this word, your word, that you do give us purpose, that you do give us direction, that you do give us joy, that you do increase all these things in each one of our lives. And Father, as we approach this, this Christmas, may we continue to, to be aware of these things. With the heaviness of all that is going on, with the heaviness of the the election and all the drama involved in that with the, and by the way, Lord, would you remind us again that it's not through politicians that you're gonna save the world anyway, no matter who it is. Yeah. It could be someone that we love who got elected or it could be someone that we dislike. It really doesn't matter. You're still the one who is in control. You're still the one who loves us and you're still the one who has uh, uh, our best at mo in mind. And so, Lord, we, you, in the, the heaviness of the, all the, the drama with the politics, in the, the incredible heaviness of dealing with COVID-19, and, and it might possibly be, Lord, that there are some here who have friends that have passed away from COVID or have gotten very sick. I, I know I can tell you that, that Pastor Katie and Lloyd and I have a friend, and I want to take a moment, and I want to pray for Pastor Javier Tamez up in Las Vegas, his condition is dire. His condition is so serious. And Lord, we would pray that selfishly that you bring him about to, to good health and uh, that you would help him to, to get well, to continue his ministry. But we place him in your hands. We ask for healing, but we would say your will be done. But Lord, even with the, the heaviness of those things, our hearts are filled with joy. We celebrate joy today. The joy that you give us, not the joy that we manufacture because things are going well in our lives. But even as, as disappointment and sadness happen in our life, we still trust you and we still have joy. So thank you. Because of that, we have hearts full of gratitude. Amen. And Thanksgiving wasn't just a couple weeks ago. By golly, Thanksgiving was yesterday. It is today. It's tomorrow and every day going forward. We are grateful people for all that you've done for us. Thank you for the, the, the blessing of being in a, a church family where we could be loved and cared for. Again, Lord, as we leave this place, we are reminded that there are several people who, if they would be asked, they would say, oh yeah, the, the church is uh, up there in Lake Havasu, it's on Rainbow Drive. But Lord, that's not true. The building where the church meets is on Rainbow Drive, but the church is the people. And as we leave this place, we go out. And you use us as your missionaries to minister to those that we come in contact with. Lord, would you make us aware of every opportunity that we have to present the love of Jesus Christ to those around us? And Lord, again, it may seem like how much difference can a, a small church make? Lord, it, it, it's not about size. It's about the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you continue to work in the midst of this body of Christ. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.
God bless you. Thank you for the privilege. Thank you, Pastor Rich. I've known you a long time, and it's finally my privilege to get to hear you preach. And thank you so much for that challenging message. And uh, God's blessings on you as you return to Camp Pine Rock and on all the things uh, that need to happen there and are going to happen there because God's kingdom is going to keep increasing, as you said. Well, let's close this morning. Stand together with us. We're going to sing It's Christmas, and then there will be a closing scripture. And uh, so join us on It Is Christmas. Scripture is from Psalms 5, 11, and 12. But, all, but let all who take refuge in you and rejoice, let them sing joyful praises forever. Spread your protection over them 
that all who love your name may be filled with joy. For you bless the godly, O Lord. You surround them with your shield of love. Have a, have a good day. Thank you.